Good morning. Welcome to our virtual worship service here on Easter Sunday. The Lord be with you. If you're joining us as a guest or visitor, welcome among us. I look forward to meeting you. For those of you who are new, if you'd like to follow along, please scroll down to see the link to our bulletin for the service. The kids' message provided by our Director of Christian Education, Andy Muick, is available on a separate video. The worship page contains a bunch of other materials as resources for you, your family, and loved ones. Now, we join together in praise, prayer, and hearing God's words of triumph. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. We now join in the opening hymn to our King.
God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Together we confess. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. And now the precious word of the Lord. Christos Anesti, Greek to you and Greek to me. Christ is risen. Alleluia. 
The first reading is from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death, by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we hear the good news according to the Apostle John, the brother of James, the son of Zebedee, who ran to Jesus' tomb on that Easter morning, the 20th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in a white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is indeed the good news of our Lord. Thanks be to God for the resurrection of Christ and our resurrection to follow. As we now prepare our hearts for the hearing of the message, 
we join in singing the hymn of the day. Grace to you and peace from God, our loving Heavenly Father, from our Redeemer and Lord Jesus Christ, and from our Comforter and Counselor, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The construction of the Easter story based on Ralph Wilson's narrative is fictional, though the events recounted except Mary's deathbed words actually took place. So here goes. 
It was like a violent storm had gone through, leaving destruction in its wake. But early this Sunday morning, all is quiet. The lull after the storm, or so it seems to Mary. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me tell you the story. First, there is Jesus, the leader and prophet from Galilee. When his popularity was at its apex in Jerusalem just a week before, many had considered him the Messiah. But by Friday, his enemies had succeeded, executing him by crucifixion. So now there are soldiers guarding his tomb. Why? His enemies had heard a report that Jesus was supposed to rise again on the third day. Preposterous, his enemies said. But they could take no chances. If there were guards, especially Roman guards, his disciples wouldn't dare steal the body and claim he'd been raised. Keep a lid on any stories that might re-inflame the populace. That was the plan. So in the moist, bone-chilling darkness, the soldiers... Soldiers huddle around a sputtering fire that flickers ghostly images amidst the shadows of tombs. They're not afraid, mind you, just ill at ease, anxious for the dawn that will soon brighten the horizon. Jesus' disciples figure in the story too, but they are afraid, terrified that they too will be arrested because of their close association with Jesus. They're in hiding within the city, No worries from them now, their enemies smirk. Crowds of pilgrims that had swelled Jerusalem to the bursting point over the Passover weekend have gone home now, back to their villages, bearing a disquieting story of how the Galilean healer had been killed. They're still angry, of course, but the danger of riot over the Nazarene's trial and execution is past. That's how things stood just before dawn. Sad, tragic, so much hope, so much promise, but now it seemed to have come to nothing. A movement so full of exuberance looks like it has been crushed, its famous leader cut down, its lieutenants in hiding, its followers scattered. But after the storm, life goes on, and now we meet Mary Magdalene. She has been one of the Nazarene's most devoted followers. She and some of the women have risen very early to honor their teacher's body and are headed for the garden tomb just outside the city walls. Within the sepulcher, he lies, cold and lifeless on a rock slab. Mary Magdalene had been there Friday night. Her own hands had helped wash and prepare the body. The woman turned from the lane into the cemetery garden, walking numbly, one foot in front of the other. Suddenly, Mary looks up and shouts, the stone has been moved. Quickly, she runs into the garden, past remnants of a smoky fire, soldiers' equipment in disarray, abandoned in haste, she sprints to the now open tomb. The ribbon and Roman seal that have guaranteed its security hang limply, in the morning air. Where is he, she shrieks and ducks inside. The darkness of the tomb and the concrete-like odor of fresh-cut limestone at the back of her mouth overwhelm her for a moment. As her eyes adjust, there on a shelf chiseled from the wall of the cave, she can make out grave clothes neatly folded. But where is Jesus? Grave robbers! Out in a flash, she begins to run back into the city. I'll tell Peter and John, she calls as she speeds on. In a few moments, the disciple women will see an angel who tells them he is risen. But by now, Mary is already back in Jerusalem. She pauses for a moment at the head of the street where the disciples are staying, hands on her legs, heaving, trying to catch her breath. And now she pounds on the door, Peter, Peter. After a long pause, the disciple, who until recently everyone acknowledged as the leader, opens the door a crack, looks up the street, then down the street. Finally, he motions Mary inside and quickly shuts the door. Somebody has taken his body out of the tomb, 
We can't find him. Now Peter and John are in panic mode. They pull on tunics and sandals and dash toward the cemetery. Mary follows. Slowly now, head down, she walks and weeps. By the time she arrives back at the tomb, Peter and John have come and gone. The women are nowhere to be seen. She pauses by the door for a moment, weeping uncontrollably. Then she gathers herself and steps into the cold chamber. The sun is rising now, casting long shadows across the garden. But this time, the tomb seems lit also. Two men now in bright white, dressed in long robes that extend down to their feet, rise as she enters. Why are you crying? She sobs out her story. They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. She dissolves into tears. When she looks up, the men are gone. She turns, and there the sun silhouetting him in the doorway is yet another man, the gardener, she supposes. Perhaps he'll know. Why are you crying? He asks fairly quietly. For whom are you looking? She begins her sad tale for a third time of grave robbers who have desecrated the tomb and of the teacher who had healed her and restored her very life to wholeness. If you have taken him, she pleads, Tell me where his body is, and I'll see that it is retrieved. There'll be no more trouble. Mary, the voice so familiar, she looks up in sudden recognition. Rabbi, she cries and falls at his feet. It is Jesus. It is the Lord. He is not dead. He is risen from the grave. He is alive. He is resurrected as he had said. The storm has passed and the sun has broken through the clouds into a new day. What does it mean? What did it mean to Mary? First, her discredited Lord no longer lay in shame. He had been authenticated by God himself who had raised him from the dead. With his lifeless body in the tomb, confusing doubts had come. But now, everything he had taught took on new meaning. She actually was forgiven by God. He would return. It was all true. True indeed. Jesus stayed with them on and off for more than a month. Then one day, he ascended into heaven, but his spirit lingered and spread. Over the next few years, Mary would watch the Christian movement grow in spurts from 100 to 3,000 in a single day and then to 5,000, a good chunk of Jerusalem's entire population. Persecution came, but instead of snuffing out the story of the resurrection of the Son of God, persecution caused it to spread all the more. The movement raced like wildfire to the furthest reaches of the world. He is alive. Jesus is alive. And untold billions came to call him Lord. And the movement continues to spread today. The Easter message lives. The resurrection lives even in these times. So many souls have been impacted by the resurrection. So many people have been transformed by the Easter message. There are many incredible real-life stories of redemption today. So back in 2000, 23-year-old Cornelius Anderson III, nicknamed Mike, was arrested for robbing a Burger King at gunpoint. He was sentenced to 13 years in prison, released on bail, told to await orders on when to show up to serve his time. But the orders never came. Due to a clerical error, Anderson never did time in prison. But instead of using his freedom to commit more crimes, Anderson started his own construction business, became a youth football coach, volunteered at his local church. He also got married had three children, became a well-liked member of his community, a good contributor. Now, 13 years later, the state discovered their error, 
and put Anderson behind bars for nearly a year as the case received international coverage, an online petition for his release gained more than 35,000 signatures. After a court hearing that lasted a mere 10 minutes, the judge conceded that Anderson was indeed a changed man and granted him credit for the years he should have been in prison. A teary-eyed Anderson walked out of the courthouse, walked out of shackles with his wife and daughter, telling reporters, how he was so grateful to God. It was indeed Easter for Mike. You see, Christ, his resurrection, changes people, transforms them. Another example, growing up in inner city South Philadelphia, Frank Mink was recruited into hate-filled gangs at age 13. Soon, he was touring the US as a recruiter for the gang, even broadcasting a call for new members on his cable access TV show. At 18, Mink was convicted of kidnapping rival gang members at gunpoint, and filming their beatings and torture. During his three years behind bars, Mink befriended inmates of different backgrounds and even joined a prison football league with African-American teammates. After his release, Mink has become a motivational speaker, released a memoir, coached children's hockey, which he keeps using to keep inner city children out of gangs. Mink has worked with South African activist Desmond Tutu and spoken on behalf of the Anti-Defamation League, a group that combats anti-Semitism. His life was the basis for the 1998 film American History X, it was Easter for Frank. The world can't change people. Christ and Easter does. It transforms them. Libby Phelps Alvarez was raised to picket soldiers' funerals and carry hate-mongering signs. When 9-11 happened, she and her family celebrated what they saw as God punishing the United States. But since leaving her cult in 2009, Phelps Alvarez has publicly apologized to the family of a dead soldier whose funeral she picketed. And she now prays for her family to be transformed as well. She is now living in Easter. Joshua Milton Blayi, this Libyan, actually Liberian warlord, admitted to recruiting child soldiers as young as nine years old sacrificing babies to ensure divine protection in battle. And I won't even mention the other graphic details of abominable hatred and violence. Blayi estimates that he has killed or been responsible for killing people in the five figures. At some point though, Blayi had this religious epiphany and now works as a preacher of all things rehabilitates child soldiers, visits his victims' families to ask forgiveness and offer compensation, all while raising his three adopted children. And due to the lack of a stable legal system in Liberia, Blayi has never been charged for his crimes. But he claims that he would willingly go to prison, even be executed if that's what it takes to atone for his crimes. Easter for Joshua. You think you have lots of guilt? Think about the deaths of thousands of people weighing on your soul. But even for this past warlord, there is salvation. There is new life through the grace imparted on Easter. Does that make sense? Maybe not. Maybe not at all. But it reveals God's enormous forgiveness and love. Unbelievable, huh? God's grace is unfathomable, but we believe through faith. We all have our redemption stories, don't we? Perhaps not quite as dramatic as the ones of the folks I've shared, but they are all poignant, and stirring, and powerful stories of Jesus' rescue. We look forward as a congregation of witnessing many more cogent stories of redemption 
through this community of believers and those in our lives who have yet to believe the resurrection account. May our Lord employ us to bring that message in word, deeds, song, poetry, service, prayer, love, which may sound like foolishness to many, but it is what we know as the truth. The truth that will set our loved ones, friends, colleagues, neighbors free. Back to Mary Magdalene. Now old, facing her own impending death, Mary realizes one more thing that the resurrection means to her. That day in the garden as she knelt before him, she had touched his pierced feet, no longer cold in her hands as they had been that terrible Friday night when she had watched them. Now they were warm, alive. Yes, death will come soon for Mary, but she no longer fears it. She's been transformed by Easter. She's no longer the same, for she has touched the one who has conquered death. And in her final minutes, she smiles and says, just loud enough for those close by to hear, death, where is your terror? Where is your sting? He is risen from the dead. Her eyes close for the last time on earth. The sun is shining very brightly indeed. Amen. And now may that grace of God, which passes all human understanding, stand watch over your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, the risen one, Alleluia. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Been strengthened by the word, we now share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now it's that time for announcements and offerings to the Lord. It is so good to be with you and share God's hope with you on this day of celebration. Visitors, if you have never been on our campus yet, we posted a virtual visit. It includes a virtual tour on the homepage of our website. Please check that out to get to know us. We'd love to get to know you as well. So visitors and all, please mark your attendance, share your prayer requests on the virtual welcome card Scroll down to the link to find that. What you provide will help us to make our shared ministry informed and helpful and connect with you. In addition, please don't hesitate in sharing your prayer requests with us. Our very active prayer chain will intercess for you. 
This has been and still is an awesome holy week. Virtual outdoor indoor services offered lots of community service. And this is being done on multiple days, 11 services from Palm Sunday to Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and now here on Easter Sunday. Plus, the podcasts of four sermons and the hymns of the day already being listened to. Please thank your staff and volunteers who spent an incredible amount of time and effort during this extra busy Lent and extra busy Holy Week. When the dust clears, we are expecting to have been blessed with about 450 to 500 in in-person, outdoor, and indoor worship during Holy Week. We can double or triple that number for virtual service views, which will swell in the week to come. Who knows how many souls those number of views actually entail. Could be many thousands. Here through Virginia, nationally, worldwide. We also expect a whole bunch joining us by podcast during this Holy Week and afterwards in about 10 countries. Again, Please be patient with us during the next months as we transition through the vaccination period into the post-vaccination period. At some point, we will phase out the outdoor services and phase in more indoor services, but currently many are still asking for the outdoor service to continue, and it's quite a chore to offer both on one weekend. We're also dealing with a big turnover on staff that will make transitions challenging as well, so please be patient as we work through. What activities are indoors, outdoors, hybrid, these questions, we need to work through them. When do we welcome our partners back on campus? When does a food pantry move out and back into their usual places? When does VBS happen and in what way? When do weddings and funerals get scheduled? What do they look like? How will the variants cause obstacles? When can we open the doors to outside partner groups like Alcoholics Anonymous and Community Bible Studies and so on. So please be patient with us as we work through literally hundreds of prayerful decisions and requests and adjustments, arrangements in the weeks and months to come. Finally, we are looking into holding a COVID vaccine clinic here at GSLC. One clinic possibly for members and then maybe another clinic for friends of GSLC and the community. We'll see if that's in store for us. Now, we don't have individualized prayers on Easter Sunday. However, we do grieve with, uh, for Nikolai, uh, Tatiana Loisha's father-in-law, who has been called home to the Lord. Tatiana is one of our pianists and conductors. And we also grieve about Nancy Bunker, Audrey Blackburn's aunt who also has been called home to the Lord. We pray for the Blackburn family as we look forward to the joint resurrection and reunions to come. We now join in the offering, that Thanksgiving moment of our Easter service, prayerfully considering our contributions to enable the expansion of God's kingdom. Information about online giving or text giving will be on screen shortly. We do accept gifts in the mail. So let's take a bit of time to consider giving prayerfully, making a contribution now, as we also lift up ourselves as living sacrifices, sending up the musical offering to our generous God from whom all blessings flow.
We now pray, God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused. Those who are sick or suffering. Those who are dying and those who grieve. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming, Your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
And now, may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Siblings in Christ, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace now and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.